In this video, we just want to go ahead and start uh, altering our spawning so that way we spawn purely based off of the result of our on process request complete. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually comment out our super, which goes through a list and calls a bunch of stuff that actually triggers our spawning. So that's what we don't really want to happen. So if I were to compile this and run it, we shouldn't really spawn. But what in the world did I click? I hit the bug. I'm just going to launch it again, so let's close and try it. So I hit play, and nothing. I'm just kind of a spectator. That's what we want. Let me close down the copy. And we're going to go through, we call handle server entry. And here we should be able to get access to the game mode. So let's go ahead and include the game mode, which is persistence game mode. You know, persistence tutorial game mode.h. We have to change the path, so the project name, which is persistence tutorial forward slash persistence game mode.h. Let's go ahead and get it. And we're going to spawn a pawn. So we're going to kind of do the same sort of dealio. We're just going to, what do you call it? We're going to spawn at the world center. So let's do, what is it? Get be what is it to get the game mode probably right off of the world so get world get authoritative game mode should be a template so we're going to get a persistent tutorial game mode so if a tutorial or a persistence tutorial game mode gm Meaning we got the game mode, we want to get the default pawn. So GM, default pawn class. And that's what we're going to use. Well, this is actually what we're going to spawn. So if a pawn, pawn equals get world, pawn actor of the type a pawn. And we're going to use the default pawn class. So GM, default pawn class. And we also want to have some basic parameters. So like we want to do things like set the owner and all that kind of stuff, because I don't know if on possess handles that for us behind the scenes. So we're going to do, uh, ah, what is it? F actor spawn parameters, spawn params, spawn, dang it, params dot owner equals this. Then we're gonna pass in spawn params as our second parameter. And I think we can do location, can't we? Transform, nope. So we probably would pass in after the class our location. So f vector, zero vector, f rotator, zero rotator. And that is successful, so that's what we're gonna do. So the only thing we want to do is spawn params. Should be something in here regarding uh, for pretty much forcing a spawn. Spawn collision handling override equals. Let's see what type is this. E spawn actor collision handling. So E spawn actor collision handling method always spawn. So that way we can confirm that it will always spawn. I want to create an f vector spawn location equals f vector zero vector. I want to do spawn location dot z plus equals or just equals. Let's do 400. So we know we're above the uh, center of the world. So currently this right here. Let's uh let's like this guy. Yeah, I guess I can't really move you. So we'll select the text. Set it to the center of the world and move it up by 400. So it'll spawn right up here. So that's good enough. So we should have that set up and spawning. Now that we have the pawn, we're going to possess it. So possess pawn. 
and that hopefully should allow us to spawn right there at the default area. So that's only if this fails. So if it's successful, we kind of want to do the same thing, but we want to change, we're going to pretty much alter like the spawn location and stuff like that based upon the response that we got. So we're going to want to convert the response into an actual uStruct and go from there. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and compile. All right, got some complaints of spawn location hides or spawn location. I don't see how. At 67. So is there another variable by default called spawn location? Okay, I guess so. So we'll just do location. And then for the vector where we spawn it, we actually want to change that to location. That I completely forgot about. Replace that everywhere and build. We'll go ahead and close down the editor. We still have an issue. So we have pawn. So let's do new pawn. That way it doesn't complain about it. And compile. Anything else? Nope. So let's go ahead and build. Or let's go ahead and run it. So let's see what happens. We spawned right here at the center. So we know that everything worked as well as we have this being printed as successful. That's just doing the basic stuff telling us that stuff is good to go. And we can really kind of continue from there. So let's see, we have, let's do a test. So we want to serialize or deserialize this response, but we also want to do a test to make sure that it doesn't contain timestamp. So we have access to the string. So what we're going to do is pretty much construct, or we're going to create a separate function here to construct the structure that we want. So it's going to return a F player data. So F player data convert to struct or player data. It's going to take in a F string. It's going to be a reference. Call it response string and we're not going to alter it. So we're just going to do a constant. Create the implementation. And do our checking. So basically we want to construct a F player data. Call it player data. And by default, we want to return player data because by default, we have our values set to is valid as false. So that's what we're going to immediately check for up here. So we're going to go ahead and call is it convert to player data. And we're going to pass in response, get content as string. So f player data, player data equals the return value of convert to player data. And then if player data dot is valid or is not valid, we want to spawn at the center of the world. So we're going to do a couple of different things. The first thing we can actually do is set the spawn location to be outside at the very top of the function. That way we can use it wherever and we don't need to kind of duplicate it like so. And that also gives us the ability to modify it down here if needed. So actually if player data is valid, then we modify our location. So we're going to do it this way. So let's see, we have that set up. Let's continue. So we want to try to check it. So if it contains timestamp, we know something's messed up. So if response string dot, let's see, there should be a contains. And the substring we want to check for is timestamp. So if it contains that, we just return, we do nothing. So we can actually do, if it does not contain timestamp, then what we do is we construct it. So we want to pretty much deserialize. So we have f json 
object converter. It's a JSON. Could be what is it? JSON object string to uStruct. So it takes in the first parameter that shows up. It's going to be the string. So that's going to be our response string. And the second parameter is the struct we want to pretty much put everything into, which is player data. And the other results we can ignore. So what are you complaining about? So I'm going to pass that in by reference. Or do I have to dereference you? OK, what am I doing here? Takes in. It just takes in the string. Do I need to pass in? OK, I guess I have to pass in the remaining elements. So we're still going to pass by reference. So this should pretty much deserialize the uh, struct for us. So if that's the case, I want to check it. So let's print everything out. percent D. Or wait, no, percent F, because I want to get the Z location. Layer data dot Z coordinate. That should be printing out 30, assuming everything is actually going to work. Well, let's go through and compile, and we will see. Actually, I think I need to relaunch the editor because of the header change. Yeah, that's going to be my guess, considering it just froze up too. Alrighty, let's see what happens. Okay. Contained timestamp. So there's obviously an issue there. So we spawned right here at the default center. So now, went to the check. So we want to pass in 1235 as the player ID. 1235. So Compile and try it again. This time. OK, so we got the success. So we got the correct value, meaning it deserialized it properly. So knowing that information, we can go about setting it. So we want to actually set up a, let's set up a random location. So we're going to set up, let's duplicate this guy, set it up to be static. We're going to make it so we spawn up on top of this cube. So to get the location of this, let's go ahead and move it on over. Move it on top so we know roughly where to spawn. So we have 209. We're just going to pass these on in. 1,000. And 1,006. So let's apply. And obviously it cut down on the precision, but that's fine. So we have our X, Y, and Z set up. So we should hopefully spawn right up there. Let's actually move you back. And set it up so we actually spawn where we are supposed to. So where's our location? Oh, right, that's already set up there. So we're going to ignore that. And what we're going to do is if it's valid, we're going to do location.z equals player data dot z chord. And we're going to just copy and paste this a couple times. We're going to do x, y, y, and x. So we have x, y, and z all equaling the equivalence of what we received. So now we should spawn up there, just like this. So it saved our location and allowed us to spawn up here. And we can change this up however we want. So we spawn again. We end up up there. Let's crank this number way up. So let's do like, I don't know, 60, 60,000. Now let's spawn. We spawned way up here as we are gradually making our way down. And I really thought we were in the kill zone by now. But we are pretty much, we have our spawn point saved and we're able to spawn where we, well, obviously are supposed to spawn. So now we should land right on top of that cube. Like so. No broken legs, nothing. So we know we are good to go. So let's revert that back to like, what was it, 1006? I think that was it. 
and we can go from here. So we have our X, Y, and Z, and our player ID set up. And if our player ID is not found, we go through and we spawn at the default location. So that is great. Now we just want to set up, uh, we can do rotation as well, as well as we can go about and do health, because we are going to do health. So location would be the exact same thing, except instead of X, Y, and Z, you would have your roll, pitch, and yaw. And you would go about doing the exact, again, the exact same thing. Just replace out the rotator with your own rotator. But we can also clean this up a good bit. Because what I'm noticing right here, we do not necessarily need this if else. But what I'm going to do instead is remove the else statement entirely. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to print out the log and that's it. Of course, dog bark. And move the spawning outside. So we handle the spawning outside of everything and we set the data only if it's successful. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing, and golly, those dogs are annoying. If you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where we create Team Deathmatch from the ground up in C++ with Unreal Engine, as well as a couple other cool features like custom spawning of farther away from enemies, weapon customizer to change attachments for your gun, and all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to comment down in my Discord, or join my Discord down below as well, and I'll try to help you out. So, see you in the next video.